Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. With us today is Brenda Kelly. She is Chief Market Strategist at IG. Brenda, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, the latest data from Halifax. UK house prices rose 3.9% month on month in May, the fastest rate of growth in six years. Other data, other housing surveys, seem to show that house prices were perhaps coming a little bit off the boil. boil. That no longer seems to be the case. So, the Bank of England, perhaps not, but the FPC, the Financial Policy Committee, should it act? Can it be successful? Or will the BOE eventually be forced to bring forward perhaps the first rise in bank rate? I think we'll see a combination of the two and I don't think any monetary policy committee act activity will take place until we see a removal of the help to buy scheme mm -hmm. or at the very least a scaling back of it. Uh, what we probably will need to see the FPC do is um, ensure that banks uh, maybe reduce uh, the loan to value mortgages that mm -hmm. they're able to give. Mm -hmm. uh, there's already a huge amount of stringency around mortgage approvals even down to how many pets you have and your, your actual ex your income versus your right. actual expenditure. Mm -hmm. So there have been a few um, items in the past little while that are aimed to reduce this. Uh, ultimately though I think the problem really lies here in London and the South East mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure restricting mortgages is going to affect the boom that we're seeing down here which is mostly made up of foreign cash buyers mm -hmm. and a lot of the, the, the boom is down to a lot of safe haven flow that we've seen probably from, the, from Europe uh, mm -hmm. over the, the, the course of the financial crisis. Okay. Uh, so the FBC will need to to scale back the help to buy, we'll probably need to see a little bit more stringency in terms of mortgage approvals, which are already falling, or mm -hmm. have fallen somewhat anyway. Indeed. And then I would expect that the MPC will then look to gradually increase interest rates uh, in a bid to, I think, cool the economy mm. ever so slightly, which by comparison to, say, uh, Europe is, uh, is very much uh, firing us on all cylinders. Fantastic. Okay. As far as the exact timing of the first increase in bank rate, when would you see that coming? perhaps? Um, well, it's going to be difficult to do given that we have an election year coming up and hmm. you generally don't see any rate hikes in or around that particular time. Okay. Uh, there again, we have been given certain hints that it's going to be a gradual increase rather than perhaps a quarter percent here, mm -hmm. a quarter percent there. So we could okay. actually see something happening maybe in September or October of this year, but only after okay. we see a certain scaling back of the help to buy. It would be somewhat contradictory uh, to hike interest rates while you still have um, fiscal um, plans in place which are really I suppose acting against uh, what the Monetary Policy Committee are trying to do. All right good point. Challenger banks. Uh, we know that there's a need for more competition in the UK in the domestic banking market. Mm. Several of these lenders are going to float on the London Stock Exchange R just about June. In fact today we have one, one savings bank who's just listed. Should we invest in these banks? How do you see their potential? Their, what's the outlook for their shares? I think it's, a, it's going to be an interesting time and mm. I think competition is always healthy, uh, certainly uh, with regards to some of the, the larger UK banks and mm. certainly the global banking system, uh, there is perhaps a lack of faith in that particular system mm -hmm. uh, which is you know, clear uh, from the last number of years. Mm. Nevertheless, we have seen some of the share prices of those banks rally. Uh, if anything, what we probably see with the normal banking system as we see it now is a scaling back of the investment arm, the fixed income, the commodity and the currency trade which mm -hmm. is clearly not doing that well for them, particularly the likes of, say, Barclays, JP Morgan. Um, so I think for the retail client, it's going to be important to create a bank that is simple and it provides what mm. the retail person needs. So I think there is a good chance that we will see a plethora of these banks come onto the market and possibly mm -hmm. float in the stock exchange. And I would say, certainly, uh, I would certainly take a look at them mm -hmm. uh, and see how they go, but I wouldn't be inclined to be the first person to jump on the bandwagon. All right, fantastic. Okay, also we have the European Central Bank meeting coming up. Mm. However, there are some analysts who have been pointing out that Eurozone banks, the same as in the UK, they really are not liquidity constrained, which in the end is more or less what people expect from ECB, more liquidity. Mm. They are capital constrained because of the uncertainty about the levels of capital, regulatory capital which authorities are going to ask of them for example, through the upcoming stress tests. Mm. That means the ECB measures might not be that effective after all. So given expectations in the market now for the ECB, will it be enough? 
Um, I'm not so sure that, well, the expectations are one thing. What the ECB mm. will actually do is another thing altogether. Uh, certainly last month, uh, Mario Draghi did say that they were comfortable acting this month, which yes. is what the market has really latched onto. Mm -hmm. But it's what he actually means by that. And I think uh, given the, the heightened expectations in the market, uh, nothing short of, short of full-scale QE mm -hmm. will satisfy um, those, uh, those particular bears at mm. this moment in time. If anything, um, we might see a reduction in all three of the interest rates. Mm. Uh, of course, bringing about a negative interest rate on deposits mm. for banks is going to be an interesting one to, to assess, uh, mainly because of the capital constraints that banks have been have had forced on them, and rightly right. so. Mm -hmm. um, but they may actually start to remove some of the cash from their balance sheet. Mm. Uh, they could invest in non-Eurozone banks. They could place their money there. Uh, and of course, they could actually pass along those costs to the customers. So there's a fear that, one, it'll impact profitability mm. which of the banks, which I completely doubt because mm -hmm. I do feel the customers generally will pick up the tab for, for anything that the ECB might do. And okay. quantitative easing, it's still not part of the mandate of the ECB. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. while there might be a feeling that this is coming, um, I don't think it'll probably come maybe until the end of this year. Okay. And even at that, it will need to be passed by treaty. Um, mm -hmm. Their main mandate is stability. Granted, uh, price stability at the moment mm -hmm. is well below where it should be. And there has been a, a, a spate of denials for the last few months. So we've got an element of reactivity from the ECB rather than proactivity, which makes that task ever so much harder. Um, so I'm not sure negative interest rates will work. Mm. I think the demand perhaps for, for loans is probably what is at stake here. And in peripheral countries uh, in the Eurozone, that is probably, uh, there's probably a dearth of that at this moment in time. Uh, what needs to be addressed is not liquidity, it's the debt. It is the mm -hmm. underlying debt that so is there. So how do you go the about market. that? Well, I, I believe that what, what has been done at the moment is to try and flood the market with money that it will get passed along mm -hmm. down into the real economy. <coughs> mm -hmm. And there has to be a way of forcing the banks to do that. So um, unfortunately, we have had the funding for lending scheme here in the UK. Right. I'm not so certain that has been a, a total success. But maybe something like that, which mm -hmm. is a little bit more stringent, which rewards banks or penalizes them if they don't um, use this money in to, to support small and medium yeah. enterprises. Okay. It, there has to be a regulation there that the banks are working for the people mm. rather than the other way around. All right. Finally, China. It's, you could say it's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Curiously, overnight we've had contradictory remarks from policymakers in different countries. On the one hand, you had a speech. <clears throat> it was Richard Sharp <clears throat> Sorry, from the FPC. His opinion is that China, the risks of a China slowdown for the UK economy are real. They need to be monitored. However, on the other side of the Atlantic, you had David Lipton, who is first deputy manager of the IMF. And in his opinion, there isn't a sharp Chinese slowdown. Quite the opposite. He's asking for a certain moderation and restraint on the part of Beijing as regards stimulus to prop up that economy. The Chinese economy is critical for the FTSE 100, for example, for all the miners. Where do you stand on this debate? I think there has been an ongoing debate for the last few years mm. and it has been fairly clear that China has been slowing and this is obviously down to the, the slowing in the Western world as well mm. because there is a sort of in interdependency there. Um, what I will say is that triple digit figures of growth in China are probably something that we won't see for a long time to come mm -hmm. and while we have uh, maybe GDP of around 7, 7.5% seven at mm. the moment, it is likely we will see that come under the cosh in the near future, perhaps below okay. the 7% mark. Um, I think markets are are starting to prepare themselves for some sort of Chinese stimulus mm -hmm. and clearly it's the property boom there that is very much in focus and that's a structural issue exactly. uh, mainly due to overinvestment. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is probably starting to tail off at this moment in time and it mm -hmm. could actually become a little bit more I suppose um, heavy going over the mm -hmm. next couple of years and uh, I would expect that China, China growth if and when it does slow on the back of that, will have ripple effects elsewhere, not just in the property sector, which, which as you would say, mm. uh, will definitely affect the mining sector. And we're already seeing that sort of pressure on the mining sector over the last number of definitely, years. Yes. Um, so I, I think at this at this, perm, this time, I do sense that there is slowing there. But if you look at what happened with the Reserve Bank of Australia just this week, mm -hmm. we saw rates kept on hold. There was an admission that China is actually slowing, but there was no 
action made in order to, um, I suppose, detract from that right. or even to, to work uh, against it. Mm. Uh, so it will be slow. Uh, it's not going to happen in a, in a mm -hmm. massive crisis, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would expect that, say, this time next year, we could be looking a little bit more uh, pressure on the housing market and possibly uh, the effects of the bubble bursting there will have far-reaching effects. Okay, so you are somewhat cautious on China. I would be. Okay, fantastic. Brenda Kelly, Chief Market Strategist, IG, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Alex. And thank you very much for your time. Until next time, that is all from us for today at Digital Look TV. Thank you again.